or less. Happy Friday. How are you? Welcome to Flat. I'm good. How are you guys? We're doing pretty good. I'm good. Welcome. I'm, thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. We, we've been admirers of your work for a long time, and we've like gotten to participate in sales that you put on and have you in the ex Libra show that we did many moons ago. So it's nice to like, oh, you've cleared up. Oh, you're pixelated. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so this is, uh, this is our little weekly show that we've been doing for over a year now where yeah. we chat yeah. with artists, um, check out shops and just have like a nice little casual conversation about being makers, especially in this very odd time that we are still kind of living in. I don't know. I feel like I've been uh, seeing more things online that make it feel like maybe some people are just like, back to normal. Let's just get back into it. Yeah. I think we're in the middle ground for sure. Yeah. So, uh, but it does feel like things are moving forward. I went to a live performance of spoken word last night. Oh, really? What oh, was cool. that like? Yeah, in in indoors. Okay. Ooh. Socially distanced, you know, minimal minimal setup, but it was a live performance of something. Yeah, I haven't done that yet. Um, no, 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 <laughs> I haven't done all. that yet. Was it nice? It was great. It was at a how hosted at Art Space. Oh, nice! And it was a it was a uh, it's Peterborough Pride this week, so it was a Pride spoken word event. Oh, cool! That's awesome. Yeah, that is really nice. Um, I I did a virtual conference, but there was like it was an actual in person conference, but I was doing it online, and they would pan out to the audience, and there was just like tons of people there like in an basically like a conference space nobody was wearing masks and i was like i'm so glad i'm not actually there i don't think i'm ready for that yet no 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 i'm not ready for that either so no <laughs> no i have a yeah that i things are going to start uh ramping up a little bit maybe in uh, november i think i have to go to toronto for a concert if that really happens we'll see if it happens Oh, man. I couldn't imagine. Well, we're getting there. It's starting to feel more normal. Whether or not we like yes. it, it's happening. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But we're still here on our phones, in our house, chatting with people at, on their phones, in their houses. Um, and we're excited that you're a part of it. So if we you. can get you to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about what you do, that would be a lovely way to start. Okay. All right. Uh, my name is Jeff Macklin, and I am a graphic designer, first and foremost. I went to Sheridan College for four years in the 80s, learned all the old school methods right before computers came in. So I'm blessed to have done everything by hand and then just adapted to computers when they came in. So I've been doing that my whole life but I'm also a visual artist and a printmaker as well. So I do, I have an antique letterpress print shop in Peterborough, Ontario, and I've been operating that press now for just nearly 18 years. Oh my goodness. That's like, what got you into letterpress specifically? Well, I've always loved typography, obviously, and uh, peers of mine here in town had a, had a, press a Chandler and Price sitting in a storage unit and they were just clearing out the unit and they wanted to know if I was interested in the press and I immediately said yes and immediately got on the internet and looked everything up and I got movers to move it into my garage and then that's how it started off and now that press is in my friend Beth's garage in Burlington. Oh okay so you've like did you just decide you wanted something different or like you were like I'm past this press now? Well, I think like you would know as well, it's the same thing is once you have something that's like that, things come to you. People are with those things are drawn to you. You know, I often show up at the shop and there's a box of things at the door that somebody's left. They think this is Jeff's stuff. So they put it at the door. So I, I immediately, like within a year, I acquired a whole shop. So I acquired a proofing press, another platen press, a whole bunch of type, type, 
and just kept going and full bore. So I didn't really, I, I did keep the Chandler and Price for a little while, but I, I didn't need two platinum presses. So I had it moved, we moved it to Burlington. That makes sense. Yeah, I can, I know exactly what you mean about how things gravitate to you. Like over the years, like yeah. we've been offered many presses and like I say yes to all of them. And at this point, like uh, I don't have space anymore. Like I actually just have no space to put anything more. <laughs> Yeah. No, but, I don't. My 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 shop is only 100 square feet. So up until this summer, I had two presses, seven cabinets of type, and a big working flat file kind of cabinet as well. So it's pretty uh galley style. So there's like just an L to work in really. But I did I did divest my small platen press this summer as well, and it's now in um, October morning. There's a new person is using it there, and uh, I don't think they have a press name yet. But they're they they bought the press for me on the on the uh, understanding that if they ever decided it wasn't for them, that press had to come back to me. Oh. But I didn't use it that much. I mostly use my proofing press, so it made sense that it just didn't sit idle all the time. So I we moved it on to Tobermory. Oh, nice! I don't know where Tobermory is, but that's cool. Uh, on the Bruce Peninsula. On the Bruce oh, Peninsula. Oh, okay. okay. That's a nice yes. place to be. Exactly. So. So it's in a good home. I feel like maybe it could be like we haven't been open as long, but it hasn't been like too. Like we've been open for twelve years. You've been open for eighteen. Have you noticed like over the course of that time? Because I feel like I have like a shift in like how people see like letterpress and like a, an appreciation for it. And then also like how that makes like sort of those like nice little, like, Oh, I weirdly have all this type. Do you just want to have it like a shift in like how that um, exchange happens as well? Oh, there's been a big change in the community. I mean, you know, it's like the internet is this amazing connector. So when I first got into it, I immediately, needed things. I only had a press, but I only need, I needed things. So I immediately found Don Black. Yeah. You know, and I realized that the biggest supplier at the time of used letterpress type and equipment was just a hundred kilometers away from me in the whole world. Yeah. It was the biggest dealer in the world. So it was a luxury to get the things I needed to get going from him. Uh, but the, one of my, my, my bigger point is that it's a community that's totally connected. You know, I was able to reach out to people all over the place and ask questions. Everybody was so helpful. And then I try to reciprocate and do the same thing today. Yeah. It's a really lovely community because like all of the machines that we work with are built in the late 1800s, early 1900s, yeah. 1950s for a lot of those like Vandercook proofing presses. And like that stuff, yeah. like it, those companies are dead. And so there's like not really somebody yeah. you can call to be like, how do you fix this? Where do I buy the weird spring loaded yeah. thing that controls the paper? And it's really about Exactly. It's really about knowing these dudes or these girls in the field who are like, I know where somebody will manufacture that for you. Or like I know somebody right. out in California that will redo your rollers for you. And it's about this right. kind of network. And it's a really supportive place too. Yes, like when I, I've only ever had one thing break on the proofing press, and it was a, it's a little tiny uh, pin with a crescent on it that causes the roller to oscillate back and forth. And I, I was able to have it welded, but it didn't hold. But I found one from this guy named Dave Churchman in Indianapolis. And it was like $80, but he was like happy to send it to me. And it was, I, I don't know what I would have done. Yeah, no. I, I'm so worried. Like, I need to put new rollers onto our Vander Cook. I need to find somebody who can do that really well. But like, I'm always paranoid that one of the pieces is gonna break, and I'm not gonna yes, be able yeah. to like. I'm I'm not a machinist. Like, I don't know that. That's skill. right. You need a you need a friend who's a tool and tool and die. Yeah. Oh. We're losing you, Jeff. I wonder if it's us. Is it us? Maybe. It seems to be fine there for a moment. It seems fine now again. Yeah. Yeah, you were, you were just saying you need to know somebody who's like in tool and die, which is a weird skill yeah. set. And you need to know somebody who's like in tool and die and patient enough 
to deal with your crazy weird request to make some specific item from a press in the 1950s. Yeah. That's right. My, uh, my proofing press is a fag. It's a Swiss press. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's the same as a Vandercook SP15, but it's a Swiss press and it has an adjustable height bed. But uh, I, it came with the manual. I have the manual for it Ooh. and all the specs. So I could literally have that little piece made. Oh, wow. Yeah, we don't have that. We do not have a manual. I think we have like a really poorly photocopied version of a PDF of a Vandercook manual that might be like ha like only like six or seven pages long and like clearly missing yeah, much yeah. of the information. So yeah. the, when you, you kind of like, I, I guess like because we met you through the book art scene circuit. Yeah. And so I feel like I've always sort of seen you as like a letterpress printmaker first and like knew that you did graphic design. But in being on your website and you just introducing yourself now, you sort of graphic design first, letterpress second. Can we talk a little bit about like the graphic design end of what you do? Uh oh, did we cut out again? I'm just moving. I'm just moving to see if it picks up a bit better signal. Okay. Okay. Let's try that. Okay. Okay. Looks like it's settling. All right. Yeah. Did you hear what I said, or did I cut out? No, I need the question again, please. Okay. Um, I guess I was saying that, like, I always kind of see you as like letterpress printer first graphic design second but in being on your website and you introducing yourself now you are sort of graphic design first printmaking second can you talk a little bit more about like the graphic design end of like what you do and what that focus is and how yeah like i don't think i know much about that part of your practice okay sure uh well like i said i been a graphic designer now for 31 years um, and I've been freelance now for nine and a half years so almost 10 years freelance since I was downsized the last time so I've always worked in um, branding and uh, but it being in a small town um, I work a lot in the arts as well I'm a definitely arts worker most of the time working with other arts groups in town working on branding but uh, it is pretty arts focused overall. But I do sit at a computer, you know, eight hours a day. I sit at a computer. And uh, then I've always had the letterpress as my, like, I call it a side. And in the beginning, it was definitely a hobby when I was getting into it. But now it's like 30% of my yearly income. So I, it's just, I don't know if it's like you guys, but I have all these various little threads that all add up to an income. And letterpress is like a third of my yeah. income. So it's a definitely a major thread, you know, cause I, I don't think, uh, I don't, I get bored maybe as well. And I like to do a bunch of different things. So it allows me to keep my hands and use my hands, not just sitting at a computer, you know, coming to the shop is a beautiful break from sitting at a computer. Yeah. I see here a comment. Um, and I think it says Eco Mum for real. It says we love the hybrid graphic design letterpress logo you made for us at work. Um, and I think that's an interesting sort of question to ask. Like, do you feel like, like obviously there's a relationship between type and graphic design. I don't think anybody could not see that connection, but I don't think a lot of graphic designers do like are given the opportunity to really handle type the way that you have like 18 years of like being around wood type, lead type, working with it in a shop is a really different experience than like working with it on a computer. Um, do you feel like that does like bring a different type of quality to the graphic design work you do, even if it is digital? Yeah, I th really think it, it makes a huge difference. It's a differentiator. You know, I, I often for projects print type and then scan it, vectorize and use it in my work. Oh, oh big time. So like uh, the, the, the work job that was just referenced is a logo for Canadian studies at Trent University. So I came to the shop, I experimented with the type, I printed a whole bunch of type, various styles 
in black and then I took it back to my home and I scanned it all in, vectorized it in Illustrator and then started mucking around with it at that point. Um, so I, I do try to imbue my, as much as I can, you know, not every job it applies to, but I did a record recently, a vinyl record design for a local musician, Benj Roland, also incorporating scan type and digitized type. So I, I'm, and I've got a logo I'm working on right now where I'm also introducing interesting letter forms into the logo. So it is definitely allows me to differentiate myself from all the other designers in town. That is really you neat. Know. I like that a lot too, mm -hmm. because I feel like it's one thing to like, even take a picture of the like, the wood block, but then when you print it, like the printing of that, the like textures that come off of like the different surfaces, even if you change the paper up, you could keep using the same like letter, but with different pieces of paper and or different like levels of pressure. And you could the variety and range that you can get from one piece of type is is pretty impressive. So I, I can imagine that, yeah, like, yeah. yielding some really interesting and unique results. Yeah, I think over the years, it's crept into my work, and it's much more infused. The, the two parties overlap a lot more than they used to in the last five years. Yeah, because even your printed pieces are, like, predominantly, like, type or text focused. I don't know yeah. if that's always been the case. Like, I know when uh, we did the Ex Libris with you, there was some, like, carved items um, but like scrolling through your Instagram feed of late, it's been mostly like type based, but also some like the piece that I shared the background is that painted and then you put text on top. Yeah, so that's another thing I've been working on. The pandemic's been a very strange time. <laughs> you know, I've had the luxury of having a studio a few blocks from my home. So I had a second place to go to. Yeah, which was amazing. You know, I didn't have to be home all the time. I could be safe. I could be in my studio a few blocks away. But it's also uh, I painted a ton of watercolor in the first six months of the pandemic. Watercolor, I painted at least one or two watercolors every day uh, and all different kind of um, subject matter. But then I started bringing those sheets to the shop and overprinting them on the press as well. So incorporating type with the painted form, mm -hmm. which um, I, and, and just going back to what you said about linos as well, like I, I have, I definitely know that my work is more type focused than uh, relief block carved focus, but I've been carving lino blocks right from the very first day. One of my first prints was a cut of cone flowers. I still have a few prints of them somewhere. Because back in those days, I used to print like a hundred of things, and now I do like twenty of them. <laughs> you know how long it takes to get rid of stuff? <laughs> the yeah. archive. So uh, I definitely still carve lino. I always make a book every year too, so that always includes a set of lino cuts that you make a book are in that chapbook as well. I try to make a chapbook at least once a year. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> that's impressive. Yeah. Books aren't—they're like not a small feat. No, they're, you know, they're not a super aggressive. They're probably 16 page, 24 page, sometimes just, uh, you know, we always make a signature for the Ways Goose anthology, yeah. which I've continued to do through the pandemic. Often it's an expanded version of that, but not always. Can you talk so I always, about I what like to... Ways Goose is, just in case people don't know what oh, that sure. is? Yeah, for sure. The Ways Goose is not exclusive to Grimsby, Ontario, but it is a, a gathering of printmakers. Uh, there's, they're held around the world in a few places regularly. And I've had the luxury of uh, hanging out with amazing people like yourselves at the Grimsby Ways Goose in Grimsby, Ontario at the Art Gallery of Grimsby. And uh, they publish an anthology every year. And I've, ever, since 2005, I've contributed to the anthology. So I've always printed an eight-page signature and had it inserted into the anthology, which is an amazing, amazing thing. You know yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, they're beautiful, too. I think that um, one year, Artspace had, like, all of the works up. Did they not? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, which yeah. was a really nice... So, um, 
So I always make sure I carve lino blocks for that. And I have done wood engravings on occasion as well. I have a book that I published about the Kawartha Highlands in a region just north of Peterborough. And it has a wood, wood engravings of dragonflies and, uh, you know, rock like scenes kind of thing. So oh, I do try to, nice. to do that as well periodically. Oh, you're chopping again. I love like that. Again. Do you do you think that we will there be we able go. to back. see the shop? <laughs> I feel like we might lose it. Do you I, yeah, I can go into the shop. We can try it. Okay. Sure. There's a likelihood. Uh, I usually I I often have access to Wi-Fi there. I'm going to climb down a ladder, so just bear with me for a moment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> This is the shop. Amazingly close. Yep. So we're in the shop now. Okay. There's okay. The press. We're, we're, we're still good. Them. And the type. Yep. And then there's a like whole galley so over here. It's a mess. It's always a bit of a mess. I've got it all super cleaned up right now because the studio tour is this weekend. Oh, yeah. This is the month for studio oh, tours. Yeah, it is studio tour time. Yeah. Woo! Oh, you're pretty choppy, Jeff. Okay. The shop is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Darn you, internet. It was Is good it still choppy? Second. We can see you. You're kind of pixelated, but like I can hear you. Okay. It's too bad because the shop is adorable. I know. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a garage, and it's on the Bonacord Street, and it's um, the creek. Jackson Creek runs underneath the street, just down the street, hence the name. Oh, I actually never knew why it was called <laughs> Jackson Creek Press. Yep. There's a creek just down the street. So people can come to the shop this weekend during the studio tour? That's correct, yep. The studio is open from 10 to 5, Saturday and Sunday, for the Art Gallery of Peterborough studio tour. Oh and I God. think it's about my eighth, eighth year on the tour. I, I used to, back in the beginning, I would just put my own signs up and co-op the tour. I wouldn't pay the fee. I would just gorilla it. And uh, but then I got on board a few years ago, so <laughs> we've considered doing that to our own tour here, which is also this weekend, but we've never actually oh, yeah. done it. Um, we've never right. actually like put signs out because a lot of the times we had residents here, and there are moments when you're like, Do we really want to impose whatever resident that's in the print studio to having to talk? without being asked if they're interested in that for a whole day. Um, no, right. that seems unfair <laughs> to do that to somebody. Yeah, right. uh, so we've, we've never joined the tour. And I don't know if it's changed, but there was for a period of time um, really restrictive rules for the Prince Edward County tour, where if you weren't exclusively 100% PC only artists, you weren't um, really welcome on the tour. So because we had artists visiting from all over the world, it sort of excluded us from being able to participate, which um, yeah. I didn't love. I'm sure that there's reasons for it, but uh, it was kind of a bummer because it would have been fun to, um, you know, have, have whoever happened to be here at that time chat with people from the community about what they're making. Yeah, I love talking about my work, and it's a really nice opportunity. Um, we have very res we have uh, looser restrictions than last year. Last year it was invite only, so you would book a book a, a, sh a showing. Uh, this year we are more back to normal, but we have uh, you know we have all the all the protocols in place. Masks so must be that, worn. How does that work with your shop being so little? One person at a time. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> or one, one, one bubble at a time, I guess. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So they'll come in and they'll be able to see the type and are you going to be printing? In the press, for sure. So I've got, I can't say what it is right now.
but it does incorporate a lino cut. And I'll print it through the weekend, but I'm also working on my seasonal cards as well. So I'll be working on those as well. Oh my God. Seasonal <laughs> cards. I know that we should be I know, I'm sorry. Crap. But like, oh man, 2021, where have you gone? Where have you gone? It's already craft sale season. Yes, I know. Um, I like, I want to like snoop around the shop more, but I'm like worried about us getting cut off. Yeah, if you point us in a direction and it just sits there for a little while, I think it clears up I've after got a lots bit. Of yeah. Yeah, I, is it still cloudy? Is it still foggy? Or uh, pixely? A little bit, but it's actually not too bad. No, you just have to go very slow. <laughs> yeah. So there is seven cabinets of type. I have a ton of type. I cannot take any more type. I have about 17 drawers of wood type. Oh my gosh. If people offer you type, just send them in our direction. We have no wood type. Right. You have no wood type? No. I know, right? Devastating. Well, I have purchased some wood type. Some type I can't say no to. Uh, I see it on, uh, there was a, an antique store up on 28 that had a bit of type and I bought it. I normally try not to buy the place, the type from the places that are like Hellbox. You know, I've got three or four drawers of Hellbox. Hellbox is basically a, a drawer that's mixed, so there's no complete font, per se. <laughs> but I'll show you. So you got this kind of thing. So just hold us there for a little bit so that it unpixelates. Okay, there we go. Oh, yeah. See, that looks like just fun to me. That sounds like a fun box, like not that. a Hellbox. That's like that's a right. box of joy right there. <laughs> it is a box of joy that's for sure yeah we i feel like um with with wood type the only places that i see it come up and it's probably because i'm not actively looking either is like where people are selling like one single letter for like 40 dollars, and i'm like <laughs> i can't do anything with a 40 dollar letter other than be like why no, did i make this mistake why did i <laughs> do this error in judgment <laughs> Yes, that's right. I don't do that either. So I'm not, I'm not good. I hate to think that type is being broken up and made into coffee tables oh, and stuff like that. Oh, it, it makes me so sad. It is though. It type is meant to be printed. Yeah. 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 Or like I've seen, yeah, where it's like poured resin over top of it. So it's like yes. not ever Locked usable in. again. It's like, no, just. If yeah. you want to do that, get someone to like laser cut you some letters in wood or something. Like, don't take the old type. Heartbreaking. Oh, you're back. I got you back. Yes. Um, we have a couple art chairs here. If we want to do that, since I feel like we might keep breaking sure. up if we try to like show more of the shop, which is sad. Okay. But maybe if you. Send me some pictures of the shop. Um, yep. And if you, even if you want to make them videos and talk about anything, I'll share them to the stories. Cause I know that people were excited about seeing the shop and I, we've been, we'll figure out. we've been talking about creating some kind of pitch so that we can fund a tour where we do flat files live in print shops around Ontario. And we just like pack ourselves up with our Corgi and drive yes. around to places. Um, so, which would make this a lot easier. Do you want to go first? Sure. Okay. So our first one is an artist that we've talked about before, but I found this piece by her and I really just love her work. So I'm showing another one. So this is Lisa Wicca. She is a printmaker in the States. I'm not sure where exactly she's living these days, but somewhere in the U.S. And this is an older print. So Lisa stayed with us many moons ago. I wonder if there's a date on this. There's not. Um, and we met her at an SGC, I think, or possibly she was a resident first. I can't really remember. But um, I got this during one of the SGC conferences 
And most of Lisa's work right now is thinking about like buildings and uh, infrastructure and just structures in general. So they're a little bit more like architectural focused, but I love that this older piece is architecture, but also with figures. So like uh, this like body architecture breakdown and I don't know, I just like, I love the shapes and the way it's sort of disjointed and it's also just like beautifully printed, lovely sheen collé, uh, just a really clean, beautiful print. And so, yeah, that's our first share. That is a beautiful piece. I love the, uh, it's an etching, I assume. It, yes. Yeah, yeah it thing, has. The thing plate. So like this paper and this paper yeah. are different. So there's like oh, a little wow. bit of a ridge that you can and so Beautiful. some of it is now i just want to like pick at it no don't pick at it <laughs> there's two elements of sheen collé on here the pink top and then the which if you look up like lisa's work and i'll obviously share um information about her in our stories a lot of the work now has this still a similar sort of like play with textures but um, sometimes, like while she was a resident here, she studied textures in the house. So our wallpaper, uh, the chipboard in the studio, and then hand drew these textures, printed them, and then created collages and sculptures using the prints of these different textures that she had hand drawn. So just like a lot of labor, a lot of like careful looking um yeah, and then also like precision in the the application and printing of them. Very much so. I love the fields of color. Really contrast nicely with yeah. the thing itself. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's our first share. Great. Do you want me to share now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll share first. I'll share this. Um, one of my biggest influences when I got going was I found this fellow online who was printing in Alabama. And his name was Amos Kennedy. And Amos Kennedy and oh, I have Amos exchanged. We've exchanged a notes here and there. And I've met him in person at the, at the Gasparo Ways Goose in, uh, in Nova Scotia. Um, but uh, his, this is uh, one of his pieces. And it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. he used to, he's really all about. A lot of his work is highly politicized, especially in the last a couple of years as we've been in this kind of tumultuous time. He's really using it as a, uh, he uses the print, printing press as definitely his voice. So Amos Kennedy is a huge influence. And this is printed letterpress on a press, a little bit probably the next size up from mine. It has a big field of yellow. Uh, it's all relief printed, a border from wood, wood border around, and then the nice big black bold wood type. It's a beauty. And he signed it for me. Yeah, Amos it Kennedy is, is a huge influence for sure. Uh, I, do, I do get political in my to... work as well. I know, I was like, I wanted, I should have shared like a whole swipe through of your pieces, but I wasn't sure... I like I always have in my like letter like my email to people that I'm going to share one but I never know right. if it's like okay for people if I share multiple and I was at the Agnes Etherington when I posted yesterday for you so I was like I don't have time to like ask Jeff then wait because I I'm not getting great internet here so I just shared the one but there was like several that I wanted and the other one that I really liked I liked the panic attack one <laughs> I really thought oh, yeah, about sharing that as the like main, but I didn't want it to be like, we're going to have Jeff Macklin on. Here's a panic attack picture if people didn't know who you were. I love to use words. Like I said in my bio, I use words as visual triggers. Yeah. I love interesting words. And I love, I'm, I've got a Google Doc on my phone that I'm constantly, when I think of anything, I put it in the Google Doc. If I see a little bit of dialogue in a movie that I think is cool, I'll put it in the doc. And it all just gets stockpiled there, and then I draw from it when I am inspired. But I'm oh. very engaged uh, politically, both locally and uh, in other ways as well. So I do, I'm not afraid to like, you know how sometimes when you run a business, if you put yourself out there 
and how you feel you're going to drive people away. People are worried they're going to drive people away. I don't feel that way. I feel like while I may drive people away, I'm also attracting more of my people. Yeah. You know, I think there's a push and pull there that I'm happy to take the brunt of. And just, I want, I want to send my message out there. I don't care who I offend. Um, it's never a course or anything. Well, sometimes a little course, but I'm really, uh, these things need to be said. And Amos Kennedy is a great example of putting words out there that need to be said. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I, I think that like, I think that if you're being earnest and you're, you know, saying more than just like shouting something that is political for no reason, then I think people respond in a way that's like more productive. And I think sometimes like making little friction and, and asking for a conversation or for a deeper dialogue or whatever to, to exist, especially on spaces like Instagram that feel a little like everybody's happy. We all can afford a latte, which like, no, we can't. Um, yeah, so right. it's, I think it's valuable to have that kind of conversation happening there. And mm -hmm. uh, so I love it. I also just love yeah. some of the simple things that you have on there. Like the one that says lower the bar. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Yes, I really resonate with that. <laughs> That's the thing is, um, is finding those little couplets or, or pieces of dialogue that when they're isolated on their own, have a different resonating quality to them that people can pick up on and run with. Um, one of the things I did, I, I have events the odd time and the last event was before the pandemic. And it was, it was during the exactly during all the hours of Trump's inauguration what year would that have been okay. 2017 anyway I opened the shop uh, pe people brought wine we printed a beautiful poster about martin luther king people got to crank copies of it and then we printed about 200 of them sent them out into the world with people and they put them up everywhere so i'm really interested in like engaging with people oh. creating messaging and putting it out in the world so we, we've done that on a few occasions. Over a municipal election, I've done it as well. When things needed to be said, we make posters about water. We make posters about housing. We make posters about food, local, all those kind of themes. And then people take them out into the world and we put them up. Uh, Jeff, I love that. It's such like in the spirit of printmaking to do what you are doing, to like put it's messages the out there and to the use the press. It's the power yeah. of the press, right? You know, uh, up, up, my little press was a treadle press, but, you know, nothing can stop me. I'm not beholden. Internet. <laughs> You're back. Yeah. I'm back. <laughs> you know what I mean? The power of the press. We do know it. It is the power of the press. I feel like we don't utilize it enough that way. I feel like we've started utilizing this space in that way a lot but more. I think the reason perhaps we don't utilize it, like you hit on this, Jeff, which was as being a business in the community, you are very aware of your presence within that space and how you present to the world. And we've always taken a very like, kind of like passive neutral stance. Yeah, I think we have been over the years more neutral. I think it's also like confidence. I think that like it takes like a level of confidence and like um, a knowingness about like how you stand in that space uh, mm -hmm. that I think we've we've been like not as confident in the We're past. Getting better at We're it. getting better <laughs> at it. <laughs> so, but we're so happy that there are people that are just good at it like yourself and that we can put you on our screen and be like listen to people oh we're losing you come back internet stop sucking still no good oh well maybe we're okay can you hear me now jeff i feel yeah, like I can uh, hear you. I whatever that tell us commercial Yay. Okay. Um, I'll share an artwork. 
I'm going to show this little dude. This is one of mine. This was oh, yeah. a print that I made this summer, actually. It is a polymer plate. I made it on my Vandercook. So at our shop, we have a new art machine that we can make polymer plates. And we bought one of the boxcar bases uh, to bring up the polymer plate plus the boxcar base plus a two-sided tape exactly up to type high, which is like 0 0.925 of an inch or whatever it is. Uh, and this was a work that I did for a print exchange, which I'm hoping to actually get the print exchange sometime in the next weeks. But it was under the theme of bituminous parting. So this idea of moving away from like oil-based industries and kind of that reliance on just essentially oil. And so I made this print and I tried to illustrate this kind of idea of, um, I guess like time and growth. So this like last box or vessel on the end, there's like a little illustration of a road. And as like time progresses, this kind of plant matter takes over this space and reclaims what was uh, essentially oil based products. Right. Very beautiful. But I'm Very hoping to get this portfolio and I'm hoping to share more with you. This was the one that I did. Right on. That's nice. Uh, What's very really intricate. funny Thank is you. that so Kyle was like talking about this print exchange working on it I didn't really know much about what the exchange was or the theme or anything and I started reading the book Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert so I was like in my, our little library nook area reading this book and Kyle's in our office working on this print and I came in and I was like, hey, what are you working on? He's like, oh, I like I got this idea to like do this road because it's like about it. I don't know anything about this product, but it sounds like it's a product that's used in road construction. Predominantly, it's what holds like all the asphalt together. It's like, I don't know, it accounts for the large bulk of the world's pollution, the large bulk of much of what's going wrong with the world. So he is making this print that's like about you know, plant life taking over this road. And I don't know if you know anything about the big magic book, but her like main sort of like thesis that she um, is trying to illustrate in the entirety of the book is that like ideas are like almost like sentient entities that will like build a contract with you. So an idea may come into your atmosphere and say, Hey, um, I'm thinking that it might be fun if we write a book about blah, blah, blah. And then you can be like, yeah, that is a good idea. I accept the contract with you. I'm going to work on this idea. But that idea, you don't own it. If you don't like work on it, if you don't agree to the contract, it will go and find someone else. And like that, you know, these ideas are sort of just like floating around and everybody has access to ideas is that kind of right. what I think that the theory is that she's presenting. So anyway, she's talking about this book that she's, writing that is about like a construction company it's it's a love story but part of it was like a construction company in the amazon building um this road and then the weather really goes awry and so they have to kind of like put a pause on the construction of this road project and over that time all the plant life takes over the road and it like totally eats it up and it disappears and they go back and like their machinery is gone, the road is gone. And I can't really remember if this was based on a true story or not, but it doesn't really matter. I'm reading outside in our little library about the Amazon rainforest completely eating this road construction and ruining this like road development for, um, I don't know, like big industry or whoever yep. the like contractor was of this construction. And then I go into the office and Kyle's like literally making a print that is about plant life taking over a road. I was like, oh, the book is real. She's right. It's meant to be. Very cool. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's our second share. Okay, I'm gonna share one of mine then. Do you... All right, you're really pixelated. So I don't know if we can maybe move you so that we can see it. Otherwise it might just look like. A blurry mess. It might look like. Um... Is that better or worse? Yeah, the synchronicity is so nice. I agree. It's a little bit better. Now, if we hold okay. a still image, it might clear up. Mm, it just looks like a blob. No. Just a... Oh, 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 oh. Is it someone in overalls? 
Yep. Yes, it is. Okay. 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 I can see it. Okay, just don't move it. <laughs> it's like when you like pull your eyes away from like a thing on the back of a cereal box. Okay, we can see it. So, so this is one of my incorporated watercolors. It's a self-portrait with type coming out of my neck. Well, wait, you, the, the person in the overalls is a watercolor? Yeah. Oh, Jess, wow. this is really good. <laughs> like, <laughs> So uh, this is part of what came out of the pandemic was I painted watercolors, but I started really uh, thinking about identity and myself. And uh, so I painted myself a lot. You know, I spent a lot of time alone. So I would uh, take pictures of myself and I would paint them. Uh, and uh, then I brought them to the shop and I always left, I mean, many of them I left my head off and I've got, I'm putting type coming out of the neck in different ways. So sometimes poetry and sometimes my own words. That is lovely. These are really cool. Can you pan down just a little bit so that we can see like the, oh, okay, cool. Well, it's such a nice scale too. So what does this one say? It says, uh, it's a, ye a Yeats poem. And it says, you think it horrible that lust and rage should dance attention on my grave. Oh. Kind of sad. A little bit. <laughs> and it's printed in fluorescent orange. I recently scored a can of fluorescent orange, which is fantastic. <laughs> I highly recommend it. It's a nice, like, a good contrasting color, too, to, like, the blue of the overalls. So it mm -hmm. makes the font, like, really jump out at you, which is really lovely. Yes, yeah. So I brought all those watercolors to the shop and I sometimes fish through them and then I print responses to them in the press on the print. So it's a one-off monoprint at that point because I'm not doing multiples. It's a one-off. So. Oh my gosh. If, if people don't know the like labor that goes into setting type, setting type for one single print <laughs> is no joke. Also, well, also, you're only putting it through the press once and you don't want to mess it up. So there's lots yeah. of preparation and setup with similar weighted paper, you know, and making sure it's going to do, go exactly where you want it. There's lots of holding it up to the window and looking how it's, it's where the placement is and then committing to putting your painting through the press. It's fun. It's dangerous and fun. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had any that didn't go exactly the way you expected, but it actually sort of turned out nice? Yeah, yeah, I love uh, accidents as well. I, I, well. If you come to visit me on the studio tour, I have a big stack of setup sheets and accidents that have interesting sections, right? How you can isolate a piece. So there's a million yeah. different things going on because all my setup sheets get printed over top of each other all the time. You know how that colors and the transparent inks they all layer and create beautiful, beautiful things. Cool. So the, yeah. the paintings are part of that too. Oh my gosh. So how are you selecting like what you, what like type text do you add to the painting? Like when you're working on the painting, are you thinking like, oh, it would be nice to have this? Not at all. Okay. No, I, uh, I knew that I knew that had the idea that I wanted to paint myself without a head and I would put type coming out of my neck. But uh, I read all the time as well. So I'm thinking about, and like I said, logging into my Google app all the time and parking words that potentially could be placed there. But then when I come to the shop, I look at what I have and it's really an in the moment response. I don't oh. put a ton of thinking into it beyond the fact that I've stockpiled all these things. But then I'm looking for that perfect marriage. I've got stuff sitting here that I print the first color on, but I might be two years before I know what the second color is. I do that as well, because I've got an idea to put one thing down and I know it needs something else. So I just put it aside until I'm, I got it. Cool. I feel like yeah. that, um, the idea of like putting a painting through the press and like allowing it to be this like, weighted conversation to have like where you're doing one action it sounds like you're doing the painting in a totally different studio as well right so yeah, yeah. you're like in a space that is not connected to the print shop and then bringing that space into the print shop and
and exploring what comes next. I know I really, that separation, Kyle and I have had this conversation a lot because we do a lot just like in our own home. Mm -hmm. um, but what happens when you actually leave one space and go to another, it, it really right. does shift your way of thinking. Yes, and especially through the pandemic for the first months, other than the grocery store, the only places I went was my apartment and the shop back and forth, right? Yeah. So they're, even though they're not the same space, they hope totally have different vibes, you know? And when you walk into the shop, it's just, it's, it says things, you know, and it, and um, I just respond to what is in my brain in that moment. So. That's a great second chair. We it's only have two chairs. That's today. okay. That's okay. It's pretty improvisational. I would say it's improvisation. Yeah. I, I, improv with type, though, is just, like, too very, in my mind, like, so contradictory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's what that intersection, that's where that magic happens. Like, when you're, like, yeah. working with tools and processes that are meant to make multiples, and you're forcing it to, you know, well, you're only making a one. I don't know if you're forcing it to, but you're making one thing with a tool that's meant to make hundreds and hundreds. There's something very unique and special in that moment. Yeah, and I think that's the thing about lighter press too, right? Because this machine was a proofing press. So yeah. it was made to make one-offs, but my other machines were production machines. So I'm, we're using production machines to make art, more artisanal things. You know, it's not about volume so much. Yeah. You know, the, the biggest volume I do anymore is like I might print 150 Christmas cards. But most things I do are, you know, 10 to 20. But there is something to be that's beautiful about the, once you get into the production mode, that the press is running, you've got music on, and you're just, for an hour, you're... I love that micro-production, making Christmas cards or things like that, just getting in a groove and, like, cranking stuff out. That's a whole other yeah. thing, too. Yeah. It's too, it's, it is a nice, like there's times where Kyle and I have been working on, like we did these screen printed boxes for um, a really wonderful soda pop company locally. And we didn't design the image. We were really just being commercial printmakers. We just set the screens up and we're printing. And, yeah. but it is also like, even though we didn't draw it and it wasn't something for us, the satisfaction in like, pulling that many prints working as like a human machine it's kind of cool yeah like it's it and it's neat at the end to like see a box and be like we we are part of what made this box go from a boring box to something that feels really special right yeah it's pretty cool it's a marrying yeah. of, of a human machine yeah yeah um before we, we let you go, can we try yeah. just one more time to look at the two presses that you are talking about? I know we'll have to go slow and maybe like hold the frame quietly for a minute, but yeah, you know, sometimes quiet is good. We'd love There's to see your CMB. Press. There's only one press in the shop now because the second one is in Tobermory. But that's oh, the right. one. So this is the Swiss press? Yes. This, the the fag, yeah. And so it's the same like size as an SP15. What did you say? Is there just a bunch of paper stacked up on top of it? Uh, yeah, I've got paper up here, just sitting there. And then the, the bed has some type in it from the other day. So it's got a setup that I haven't put away yet. Cool. Nice. Yeah, it's an old. It's a lot of press. Yeah, it came out originally. It came out of uh, Macmillan, Canada, on Queen Street in Toronto. They used it for proofing, and then I got it out of a barn in Cavan, just south of Peterborough, uh, sixteen years ago. And it was completely rusted over, unworkable. So I had to spend the summer oiling, cleaning, you know, getting it up and running again. Yeah. And it's other than that one pin, nothing is broken. Yeah, it's a beautiful little press. It's done a lot of, uh, it's probably, I've probably put, you know, easily quarter of a million impressions at least 
probably closer to half a million impressions. There are workhorses. They are. They're workhorses. That's right. So it's uh, I, I, like cool. uh, Kyle said, I, I hope things don't break because I'll have to deal with it if they do. But I'm very gentle with it as well, even though it's a beast, right? It's a very tough machine. Like if it was yeah. made a, this recently, it would have broken already, right? But it just doesn't break. So yeah, I know. Bless that old manufacturing because exactly. Yeah, if it was like like anything that is meant to only last a short period of time, printmakers would be in a lot of trouble. You really, I mean, some print makers, I'm sure, make a ton of money and good for them. But the vast majority of us are very fortunate to have a machine that just like, you know, is like a co-conspirator in (laughs) making work on a a very tight budget. It's a life partner. Yeah. (laughs) That's right. Yep. This is my partner. This press is my partner. Yeah. They, sure. they, they're very special. It's really cool. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my, well, kids have, my kids have promised, made me promise I would never sell this press. So. Oh, that's so awesome <laughs> to hear, actually. So. Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, you're cutting out. It, it happens a little bit. It's okay. This is about hanging out with a friend. Exactly. I really yeah. appreciate it. And, uh, it's so nice um, to talk to you guys. I, I do watch your shows, and I've always admired your go-get attitude and your uh, independent spirit is, uh, is definitely – and I think that's the case for the community is I see people like you. You're my peers in the area – uh, just people doing things and it drives you to want to do good things too. Oh, thank, thank you, you. We feel the same. It's, I, yes. yeah, I just, I think it's really exciting. I think you're right. We have such, um, just like an invigorating community. And even though the print community in Ontario is small, I feel like it is like a powerful little force, you know, with it people is. like you just like s- spreading messages and getting, you know, the word out there, whether it's about the shop or about, you know, meaningful and important things that need to be said. And I, I hope that this weekend is super successful and lots of people um, safely and kindly come into your shop and uh, get to see the beauty of letterpress live and in, in, in person. Yes. I'm really looking forward to it. We did. I didn't take part last year on the appointment only. I was too afraid, I guess, but I'm looking forward to getting back and talking to people this year. So. I invite everybody to come 10 to 5 Saturday and Sunday. Yes. Cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Well, have a great weekend. And yeah. we'll hopefully Hi, see you soon. Yeah. Take care. See ya. Bye. Bye. Goodbye, Bye. everybody.